I started art history in Florence in the early 90s uh, with Esther Cohen and uh, we made some kind of field trips as well to shows in Torino or in Rome but we very often went to the Fondazione Petri and they have a very large collection of uh, Arte Povera and um, I must say I'm not sure but I think I saw a one-man show of Pier Paolo there and um, for me it was a whole new world. I mean I heard about Arte Povera before. I was rather familiar with uh, Joseph Beuys or with uh, Anselm Kiefer in terms of uh, raw material used in, in, in painting or sculpture. And um, I was really impressed by the directness and by the, by the, by the uh, immediate uh, effect that these works had on, on me as a, as a young art historian. Uh, it's extremely uh, uh, impressive to see so many works of Pier Paolo Paz uh, Cazzolari here in, in this place, or in these two, three uh, huge, huge, uh, 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 well, showrooms. And um, it's impressive more to see that, um, which is not always the case, and which really is it's unique here, to see so many uh, important early pieces and historic pieces of Pier Polo in, uh, in this display. Well, there are many, many things um, that will remind my mind and my head. And uh, but it's it, especially I think is it this this, um, this enormous uh, uh, impact the work still have. I mean, they are 30, 50, 30, 40 years old. I mean, they really are they are historic pieces, but still they have a, a unique uh, impact as as as. As, well, as everyday materials, objects, things, as well uh, as in, it, in, in, in their, in their uh, way of, 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 of transcend these, these, uh, these, these, uh, these uh, kind of rawness and to transform it into something very, uh, very special and, and unique. I wouldn't say there is a particular piece of work. Uh, as I said, I mean, the early pieces, the historic works are really impressive and uh, I was really stunned to have so many of them here in, the, in the, those, those three showrooms. Um, another thing that really impressed me very much and it's very telling about the early success and the dynamics that uh, this artist must have had in the, in the late 60s, early 70s, that, I mean, with 25 years as a young man, as a, even a student, like, uh, he did huge works. I mean, like the one which I stand in front of. That's for an artist that is really young, not well, younger than 30. And uh, that's really interesting. And it's very telling about the impact and about um, the importance of movement in the, in the world, uh, the post, uh, post war avant garde in Europe.
As I've been working for a very long time for my PhD for several shows on uh, the work of Piero Manzoni, uh, I was very touched today to see, uh, or maybe to understand for the first time, that uh, maybe one really special aspect about Pier Paolo Calzolari's work is that, um, in a way, you feel his, 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 that he's close to a certain Italian context of uh, Manzoni, Burri, Fontana, and uh, there is maybe something like a like a uh, Italianità, like an Italian background or common uh, uh, basement of their of their of their work. Um, but at the same time, you feel how how uh, freely he developed in his own language and how how special his development is in the last 30, 40 years. And that's something you see here in the show in a really exquisite way.